Abundance mindset is knowing. So what we say there is we say, you know, hustle needs to be there. But hustle is not fight. Like if you were to look at my daily life, every day is in hustle. From the moment wake up, okay, hustle, 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 nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Say very similar to you. You have everything scheduled. Uh, after this appointment, you have something. Before this appointment, you have something. So it's everything scheduled. It's in the hustle. But in amongst, in amongst all of this hustle, there's no fight. It's knowing. Hi, I'm Pavlina Papaluka, and in this episode, my special guest is Master Sri Akarshana, previously known as Eric Ho, one of the most watched people on YouTube in personal growth, and most specifically in meditation, manifesting, and spirituality related to entrepreneurship, which is what we're going to talk about today. And... Uh, He's here to talk about how to create abundance, how to create miracles in our lives, and a lot more. Master Sri Akarshana, welcome, and thank you for accepting my invitation to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Pavlina, for having me on your show. <laughs> so I met you four years ago. Mm. Um, it was at the Wealth Dragons seminar uh, mm. with my mentor, John Lee, mm. who is also your friend, and you collaborated. And you were a, a little bit of a different person back then. I don't know if it's a lot or, or a little bit, you're going to tell me the story, but you were already a very successful entrepreneur. You were an amazing speaker. You rocked the stage. You were an entrepreneur mentor. You had multiple businesses by that time, uh, self-made um, success. Uh, I remember a Chinese uh, takeaway franchise and multiple other businesses. So four years later, you have a different name, you call yourself the yogipreneur, which I love because I identify with that as well. Nice. Um, you look different, you dress different, you inspire millions of people around the world through your social media channels. Uh, because like I said, you're one of the most watched people on YouTube right now in this area of meditation and spirituality. I personally remember logging into YouTube one day and realizing that... Um, there, there are millions of views on your videos and it happened like really fast. I think it was within a year. And I think a friend mentioned you. I was with a friend and she said, you have to watch the meditations of this guy, Eric Ho. And then I log in and you have millions of views. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know. So you're the living example of manifesting, of creating uh, this abundance. So I don't want to talk more about you. I want you to start by maybe sharing a little bit about your story, the Eric Hall story and the Master Sri Akarshana story. How did you get started and how did you become the yogipreneur that you are today? So, um, yeah, a lot has changed since the last time we met. Um, I came from a very logical, logical background family, so it's not so spiritual and the, the, the teachings that I share today in terms of manifestation or some people call woo-woo language, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so my, my dad was an entrepreneur. I, I left college when I was 19 and I built up several businesses. Um, by the age of 24, um, became very financially free, uh, being able to drive all the supercars and all the, you know, you're familiar with John Lee, then uh, it's a, <laughs> it's kind of that type of lifestyle. So, um, and then uh, built up my own charity, nonprofit organization, did all of this by the, by, by the age of like 25, 26 was already like everything was established. Um, was searching for a little bit more meaning in life. Mm. Um, universe had me set on this path of speaking. So uh, that was actually one of my first uh, speaking mentors was actually John Lee teaching how to um, uh, get that message out to millions, which was, which was beautiful and came from the shy boy to basically sharing stages in front of thousands of people and all around the world. From that moment, um, the universe again, it's, it's funny because there's a saying that says uh, man has his plan and God has his plans. God, God laughs, right? And the universe had different plans for me. So brought me on a lot of students, which was very highly into spirituality, healing, theta healing, bioenergy healing, all different types of thing, yoga, meditation. 
And while I was doing the business coaching, which was all very logical at the time, then I was getting more in touch with the spiritual side. And at the same time, I call it the remembering. I don't call it the learning because uh, if our souls never uh, die and souls are infinite, then we are just coming back time and time again to the, to the same game. And that's why a lot of people, when they come through an awakening, and I know that you would have had that moment also where sometimes we live like the majority of our lives, um, living it maybe an ego way or fighting way. And then we come to the realization, what am I fighting for? What's all this jealousy, hate, anger, frustration, what it's all about. Then suddenly, aha, uh-huh, in a moment, it's kind of like your, your last, your past 10 years, 15 years um, becomes clear on that you were manifesting it. And so basically that remembering happened for me uh, very quickly. So I took a 180 turn and I went into that spiritual realm, but I started to see a big problem is that everybody that I met who was into meditation and spirituality and, 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 uh, and believing in law of attraction, they were all, uh, I, I, I understood and I started to see that most of them had financial problems. Mm-hmm. They like they, they meditate when bills start piling up, they start meditating and hoping, wishing for the, you know, hoping universe will answer their prayers. And then I see on the other side, which is the people who are chasing dream and dream and goal and goal and goal after another goal, chasing more money, more money, more money left unfulfilled. So I said, Hey, this message needs to get out there where people need to understand, Hey, we are a spiritual being in a human form, meaning we, yes, we need to get in touch with our spiritual, know our purpose, but at the same time, we got to do things. We got to take action. We can't just close our eyes. We're not here to close our eyes and hope for the best. We're here to live it. So it's okay. So my, my message to people today is even in the Bible, it says that God is showers you with gold. You're supposed to live in, in, in abundance, but at the same time, people, for some reason, they think that you're either spiritual or you are uh, wealthy and rich and in material world, but we're in both. We are in material world, whether we like it or not. We play the money game, whether we like it or not. So why don't we live that abundance? But at the same time, why don't we get in touch with our spirituality? Because when we do learn these two things, then, and they both coincide, we manifest things so much faster. And so that was my message in the past, I guess, three, four years now. Mm -hmm. Then only recent, last year, um, I was reached out by Grandmaster Akshar a Himalayan yogi, um, who randomly reached out, but not so random at the same time. Universe had their plans. So reached out and said, uh, her, uh, his disciple reached out to me and said, can you come to the mountains with Grandmaster um, and do training? And I said, me, why? What training? Then she said, Grandmaster Akshar would like you to be the first, his first disciple, like, Um, he has millions of disciples all around the world. He said to be his first disciple to receive the spiritual master title. And quite frankly, back then I didn't understand because I was like, why me? I have I've met the guy twice. I don't, I'm not that good at yoga and (laughs) like, why me? Mm -hmm. And when I went there, I started to realize that this vehicle, this, 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 this body was needed today because we're going through a, in spirituality, we call dark age. It's the time of negativity. And that's why there's so much going on. And I talked about this already last November and then everything started kicking off. Now, when there's this dark age, it takes positive spirits like yourself, positive people, the universe will choose because they need positive spirits to go out there right now to spread a positive message, to balance out those energies. And so, and so I didn't know what it was all about at first, but I thought, you know what, why not give it a try? See what it's about. I never, never, never in the past classed myself as spiritual master. I would never even think that was not, not my dream, not my goal. My, my thought in the past, I used to, you would see in my, in my, a few years ago, my posts were all about spiritual gangster, not spiritual master. But I guess universe had its plans. So I went there. Third day in the training, some activity was done. Third eye open, traveling, astral traveling, seeing everything, life, death, past life, everybody else's past life, future of the planet. 
and everything started awakening. I thought I was awakened before that. And then obviously continuous training, 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 then the whole initiation. And so today, this is what <laughs> the universe had plans for. And since then, I think now the channel has reached around 57 million views or something like that. So it's, it's gone uh, very, very crazy. <laughs> yes, you went very, very fast and it was very fast because I knew you before you had a YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, only uh, two years, only two years. <laughs> yes, and do you think it's the age now of the spiritual entrepreneur? Uh, I talk with some other spiritual people and they're saying that now it's, it's our time, the light is needed and we're gonna, let's say, receive uh, a help and a push to be able to help the world. But what do you think about that? And what is a spiritual entrepreneur? <laughs> People are becoming more conscious. For sure, they're becoming more conscious. Mm -hmm. So when we start to understand, I mean, it's like entrepreneur. I mean, you're a great entrepreneur. You're familiar with the whole thing. A lot, when it comes to entrepreneur and business, sales is a very big thing. Mm -hmm. Now, when people sell, they sell, they sell, they sell, they sell. They sell. You can sell whatever you want to sell, but if it's not a good product or it's not coming from the right place, actually the business is never sustainable. And I think that's when people start realizing the only way to become a very good entrepreneur and sustainable entrepreneur is to sell something of value, offer something of value. And then we always say selling is serving. So if one, when, when people come to that concept, they'll understand the only way to be very good at entrepreneur and what is, what are entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs are people who solve problems, right? I mean, if we look at the, the, the greatest entrepreneurs today, they all find different problems and they solve it. It's like Elon Musk, for example, and the problems get become bigger and bigger. The ones they solve like global, global change, climate change, right? People not being able to live here anymore. What happens? Okay. We'll develop to live in Mars. So Think about this. All the game changers in the world right now are the entrepreneurs. Why? Very simply, because they have money. Uh, there's power behind that. Money is energy. There's power behind that. They have people. They have great leadership traits. They know how to command. They know how to communicate. They know how to public speak. Right? In the same way that Jesus, Buddha, what did they have? Leadership traits. They had the, they had the vision. They were able to compel people towards action. That's what a great entrepreneur is. So mm -hmm. when people come to that understanding, which they are, more and more people are becoming more conscious and becoming more heart-centered. Okay, if I serve the people, guess what? Well, money will come to me because we get what we give out. So yeah. they come to coming to that realization. And so some people, some spiritual people say, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like money or money's not important. And I always say, how can you say money is not important? The food you eat is for free. I say the clothes you, 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 you wear is for free. I say the, the house you live in, you don't, you, you don't pay for. I say money is not important. Uh, so yeah. society has conditioned us to think that way. But when people become more and more awakened, they say, they start to understand, hey, if God really created everything, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in universe, whether you believe in just energy, if energy just created everything, right? And energy is so powerful. It created you, me, and everything. Then why not understand that money was also created by that? Materials was also created by that. And if you've got one chance in this lifetime, after this, when we close our eyes, we're gone. You're not experiencing this physical anymore. So you want to be spiritual, then just close your, you close your eyes. You can be spiritual all day long. But guess what? When you're gone, you are spirit only. <laughs> so I'm saying while you are in physical, why not? Buy yourself a helicopter. Why not get yourself a Lamborghini? Why not live in a mansion? Why not experience all? We should experience in the short time we're given. My question is, there are a lot of um, spiritual, conscious entrepreneurs that I know, mm. including myself, mm. that uh, I believe we could be making a lot more money. Mm. We do offer value. We do want to help people. And a lot of these people, they're not there yet or they're struggling financially. So what do you think is their block? If, if they realize that money is energy and what you give, you receive, and I want to help the world and I want to help a lot more people, but they're not there yet. Um, and there is this energy of struggle around money still. 
what do you think is the block that you see in people who are like that? Well, for, well, mindset is obviously number one, and I know you're very familiar with this. Is the people naturally, if, if you're thinking money is not important, obviously there's no way they're going to have money, right? If they think money is the root of all, whatever they say, money doesn't grow on, whatever they say, then obviously it's going to be a struggle. So mindset is number one foundation that needs to be changed. After mindset comes mechanics, meaning they need to have the strategy to making money. So they say, oh no, I really do believe now. I believe that I need money. Yes, so what's your action? I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so if you don't know, then what's, what are you gonna do? So after that, then needs to come to say, okay, what is the strategy? Strategy needs to be what? Marketing needs to be sales, needs to be providing value. So communication skills. Everybody must equip themselves with these skills. So they must equip themselves like that. Then what happens is, you have some people who, okay, they're good at selling. So what happens is they get transactions. But guess what? Money comes in, then it goes out. So they need to learn money management skills. Uh, after money management skills, some people still put the money out. They still go out. They self-sabotage because maybe they're afraid of success, right? Mm -hmm. So then another more mindset needs to be changed. So there's multiple blockages for people. But it's, yeah. because, but it's, because, the, it's because of social conditioning. We never learn this at school. So mm -hmm. that's the problem. <laughs> so it's all about getting, like clearing your, um, the things in the subconscious mind that might be blocking you mm -hmm. and then getting the knowledge, uh, the skills. But what do you think is the, the balance or the importance of hustle and hard work? You know, we have the hustle culture today and the work hard and I've done that versus doing the spiritual work and the meditation and can somebody do it only with the hustle only with the hard uh, work i i believe i guess if they have the right programming and they don't know they have it i guess they can but what do you think is the importance between hustle and hard work and mindset mm. Like, mm. so there's a very fine line between hustle and fighting for Fighting for is the attachment to outcome. A lot of people, they work hard. They say, but I've tried. I've tried everything. I do everything. But yet at the same time, they don't get the result. Everybody's experienced that before. Why is it every time I fight, I fight, I fight for something, it seems like I go you know, one step forward and then two steps back. Why does that happen? It's because fighting energy is scarcity. Think about it. if somebody needs to fight for something, then it's scarcity mindset. In their mind is thinking, it's not abundance, is wishing for that thing, but not knowing that it's theirs. So I always say to people, I say, you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. If you are scarcity mindset, then you attract more scarcity. So you need abundance mindset. Abundance mindset is knowing. So what we say there is we say, you know, hustle needs to be there. But hustle is not fight. Like, if you were to look at my daily life, every day is in hustle. From the moment wake up, okay, hustle, 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 nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Same, very similar to you. You have everything scheduled. Uh, after this appointment, you have something. Before this appointment, you have something. So it's everything scheduled. It's in the hustle. But in amongst, in amongst all of this hustle, there's no fight. It's knowing. It's knowing that. <sighs> so hustle, but don't be in the energy of hustle. <laughs> I need the money. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> yeah. And it's not here yet. <laughs> and, and, and that comes from just like what, 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 what you do, because you help people all the time, you're in great vibration because you know, hey, it's not even about the money right now. It's not about any of these things because you know that by putting out a great message, at least one person will message you and say, say thank you, Pavlina. Mm. Thank you. That really helped me. <laughs> and that means all because that's your purpose. That's your why. When you have purpose like that, then there's no, it doesn't feel like hustle. It looks like hustle to other people, but it's not hustle to you. You see, that's why there's this saying that says, work like you have no life. Live like you have no work. And I think that this pretty much sums up our category here, which is outside will look at us and think, oh my God, these guys, they work so much, they have no life. But what they don't understand is we are, living so much yeah we don't feel like we have any work 
It doesn't feel like what you say, this is work. How can this be work? We're just having a conversation, you see? So I think definitely action needs to be continuous, right? Energy likes momentum. If you don't apply uh, momentum, if you don't apply energy to opportunities and you're not moving, guess what? The, the energy, the opportunity will go to somebody else. So we have to always be moving. Mm. But our vibration is calm. When mm. our vibration is calm, everything is balanced. Mm. Mm. So if, let's say, um, I'm thinking about making a big leap, a quantum leap, let's call it spiritually. I have worked with myself many years. Uh, so let's take an example. My YouTube channel is now at 2,000 followers and I want to get at a million followers. Uh, I work every day. I, I put in the work. I gain the knowledge. I have great mentors. I know what I'm supposed to do. What is that thing that needs to happen uh, for, for the quantum leap into a new timeline? Let's uh, say where, where I have you know, access to a lot more people to, to spread my message, my positive message, let's say, and to help. So, so I always talk about the three things. I say, number one, mindset, motivation, action, no fear, no doubt needs to be there. So this one, for sure is fine. Mindset is perfect. Yeah. Second thing is mechanics, meaning what is, the, what is the strategy that's used on YouTube? So how often is the upload? What time is the upload? What tags are we using? What description are we using? What are thumbnails looking like? How are we doing, how are we stimulating the engagement? So we stimulate the engagement, how are we getting more watch time? Uh, so YouTube has a lot of different new algorithms, clustering algorithm, how does it cluster videos together? Because when we do that, we can trend hack. So we trend hack, we piggyback off all the ones who are getting millions of views. How do we trend hack other trending videos? So those strategies need to be there. Yeah. Final one, so mind, mechanics, mastery. Mastery is mastery in energy. So I'll share with you something, Pavlina, it's very interesting. And only I will know, everybody else will listen and they might not believe, but it doesn't matter because I see. On my YouTube statistics, when you see when it goes up more subscribers, when it comes down less subscribers per day, when it goes up more views, when it comes down less views, when it gets more ad revenue, less earning ad revenue. The interesting thing is this. You can sit, sit down and scratch your head and think, wait there a second, but I've still been doing the same strategies, thumbnail, tags, everything's the same. Why is it not working when it's coming down? Uh, let me tell you what I've realized with a conscious mind towards it is over the last two years, I've been able to see the moment my life gets busy and I'm consumed by everything, or maybe there's a little bit of stress, my subscriber rate goes down. Nobody will ever believe this. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, he's just saying that. But it's okay. You don't have a YouTube channel, then you cannot see for yourself. When I started to see how that trends, I was first shocked because I knew that nobody else knew. You know, being a, a, a public figure, positivity, then challenges happen. For sure they happen, except we respond very differently. We can still stay positive, right? But inside, maybe there's a little bit of stress going on. Nobody knew, but guess what? YouTube statistics show. It was phenomenal when I keep seeing it. Every single time it shows. I, I have that in my business as well. Yeah. Last yeah. year I was like a little bit burned out. And, and yeah. that then, you is start seeing. then you start seeing it. It doesn't matter how hard you push. You might use the same strategy, but results don't come. So that's why the final part is what you were talking about before is how do we balance out our energies at all times? And this starts with simple breath work. That's all. Every moment, not morning breath work, not evening breath work is every single moment. How are we managing our energy, our vibrations? So these need to be managed that way. But these are the three, three things. Mm, okay. Uh, definitely. I'm working on the strategy now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the energy and everything you say, I, I totally resonate with that. Um, I wanted to ask you, what do you see this uh, crisis um, that we're going through now, the, the COVID-19? It started with COVID-19 and now it's a series of things. Uh, what is it here for on a, on a spiritual level? If you can see, is it an awakening 
or is it an attack <laughs> by the powerful of the planet to control us? Uh, did it come for a reason? What did you pick up from, from all of this? It's all of what you said. It's everything that you said. Mm. Mm. So, so this, actually, this information I already put out there last November, after the mountains, I already put out there. So we, create, we had some videos, some interviews where I was talking about everything that was going to be happening in, in 2020. And the reason for it, these things will always happen. Recession will always happen. We will never be, we will never have a time where it's going to be recession free in future. It will never be because there will be our cycles, whether it's 12 year cycles, 11 year cycles, it will come. Mm. Crisis will hit, uh, deaths will happen, uh, natural disasters will happen. These things starting from Australian wildfires to volcanoes erupting, earthquakes happening, and then COVID and then now racism and everything just, they will come. So in actual fact, there's, there's more. And people don't want to, obviously we should not focus on that, but this is beginning, this is domino effect. It will continue for the next one year, two years, there will be more things coming on. So how do we um, look at this is very simple. Energy, and, and people cannot see it as bad. And I know people will be very sensitive when we come to this topic because it's like you're saying people are dying and you're saying don't look at it as bad. Well, you can look at it as bad, but you're looking at it as bad, they're not going to come back alive. So let's put it that way, right? So if that's the case, then we can't look at it as bad, right? So when we can't look at it as bad, what does that mean? It means we live in a world of duality, positive and negative. Both must exist for existence to happen. Up and down must happen in life. This is existence. If one day everything was to be positive every single day, uh, that's flatline. We know what flatline means. End of existence. So that cannot happen. Now, what happens is sometimes when things go up, they also will come down. It's a matter of time. But coming down is not a bad thing. And I'm going to explain why I say that in a moment. So when things go up, right? The energy will need to balance out, come down. Let, let's talk about human population. Just alone. Population becomes too high, guess what? It's a problem, no? Cars become too much, it's a problem, no? Right? Anything that becomes too much becomes a problem. So who is to handle it? We say, oh, Richard Branson will handle it. We say one person is to handle it. Actually, whoever governs, Whatever you want to believe in, whoever governs must handle it. If it doesn't handle it, guess what? Human race will cease. Mm. Existence will cease because we can't survive anymore. Global warming, everything happening. So somebody needs to handle it. Something needs to handle it. So it will be handled just like life and death is handled by someone else, not by you. So when that's handled, then these things happen. Now, isn't an awakening? It's a big awakening. Now, what is it doing? It is a filter process that's happening right now because it is as harsh as it sounds. It's pushing people to become stronger. Those that are weak, it is actually pushing out. Now that sounds very harsh, but we need to look at it as motivation in the sense that in Chinese, when we talk about the word crisis, we say Wei Ji. Wei Ji means danger and opportunity. Two words means crisis. So when we look at it like this, we can put our head in our arms and say, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Victim, I'm stuck at home. I'm so bored. I'm alone. I've got no work. What am I going to do? Or we can say, hey, this is not danger. This is opportunity. Because within every crisis, there's opportunity. Now, more than ever before, people are on this thing here. They've got nowhere else to go. They're on this thing. So universe is squeezing you towards technology. Be it learning this thing for so much time, probably. And you probably heard people, uh, some people, they talk about this also. Oh no, technology, AI, robots are taking over the world. What are we going to do? We're going to have no jobs left. That is victim mindset. Entrepreneur mindset, right? Like Elon Musk is thinking, okay, if everybody's going there, like Mark Zuckerberg, everybody is going there. How do we provide there? How do we, how, how, how do we do it here? Because it's going there. That's evolution. We cannot deny it. How about we find solutions on here? Hmm. So it's squeezing us 
Everybody's like, oh, I don't like technology. I don't like technology. Well, you have no choice because this is evolution. Oh, you don't have choice. So, so you have to evolve with it. And yeah. as a result of it, I did a, this was only four weeks ago. I said to, I said to all, the, all, all, all our students, I said, hey, you guys need to go online right now. Some people say, oh, some, some things we've missed the boat on YouTube, you know, and oh, I, there's so many, much competition. I said, no, you have not missed the boat. I said, let me show you something. Four weeks ago, I started a TikTok account. Yeah. Everybody say TikTok dancing, singing, miming. Uh, what is Master Sri Akashana going to do there? Uh, and I said, it's not like that. So I started TikTok four weeks ago. Today, I believe we have 97,000 following. Uh, I haven't told any of my YouTube people. It's, I did, it's not about bringing my fans over. No. From scratch, nobody knew who I was on TikTok. Uh, there are nine-year-olds, 13-year-olds on there following, you see. But why? Is because the algorithm is favoring right now, especially if you know how to hack it, because everybody's online, everybody's stuck on their phone. So internet marketing must be learned. Making money online must be learned. This stuff has to be learned now. Mm -hmm. Throughout every single crisis in history, we can look up Kellogg's, right? Uh, British Airways, all of these different uh, companies in the past, Microsoft, they grew in recession, they grew during crisis. Why? Because everybody has their head in hand saying, what are we going to do? Your competition is minimized. Now Maybe. is opportunity to thrive. You know that uh, because you were a speaker uh, with my mentor, John Lee, and I've done many seminars with him, you know that we've been talking about these things for many years, mm -hmm. <laughs> five years, nonstop. Mm -hmm. And people, a lot of people were rejecting it. And, and I see some people now, even they're rejecting. Let's wait and see. And, uh, the government and this and that. So which are the people that are going to thrive through this? Uh, gonna, through this crisis, they're going to come out stronger. Which do you think are these people? The people who are finding solutions, solution-focused people, the people who are taking action. So right now, we got to think, what is the problems? Where are the solutions, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at it like this, we run a lot of global events. Now, in the global events, we've been doing it for many years. Right? Just like John has been doing events. I know you've run some events also. Right? Now, in events, we know costs are extremely, extremely high. It looks very good on paper when money comes in, but costs are extremely high. You've got flights, you've got accommodation, you've got hotel, you've got everything going on. Right? Our company right now has been most, most, most profitable in the last five years right now during lockdown. Why? Because we are looking at where is the problem right now? The problem is most people are stuck on, stuck on this thing. The problem is most people are stuck at home. So what do we do? Provide a solution for that. Uh, just last weekend, we had an event for a thousand people, three day event, thousand people. Uh, costs are extremely low. We're talking about online event, right? Switching online. on a platform, switching yeah. on a platform like this. Mm -hmm. So what has it allowed us to do? It has allowed us to pivot. Now is the time to pivot. Now is the time for change. Those who adapt who is it that said this? It was Darwin once said this, huh? He said, it's not the strongest species that survive, nor the most intelligent species that survive. It's the one that is most adaptable to change. As humans, we have the ability to adapt. Now it's time to adapt. Hmm. Hmm. Great. Um, definitely something people need to hear because so many people sitting right now, don't, not taking action, uh, waiting for to see what will happen, but those who will take action will thrive. Um, you talk a lot about manifesting and creating miracles. So, if there is something in my mind that I want to create, or somebody watching us right now, there there is something they want to manifest. They they want it a lot. So they've been wishing for it, uh, whether it's money, a relationship, um, anything. Uh, can you give us a formula to manifest? what we want fast or to manifest a miracle in our life because i know you specialize in that so could you give me a formula or coach me on how to do that mm. so so first of all manifestation is not far-fetched some person one asked once asked they said i uh, uh how can you prove that manifestation is real and i asked him i said how did you manifest breakfast this morning and he said to me he said i didn't i said you must have manifested breakfast I said, you probably used the formula. He said, what formula? I said, number one, did you have the desire to have breakfast? He said, yes. 
I said, did you think about having breakfast? He said, yes. So after you thought about it, did it compel you to take some sort of action, whether you ordered breakfast or whether you made breakfast, did you take some action? Yes or no? Yes. And as a result of the action, did you get a result? He said, yes. I said, there you go. That's manifestation. Then he said, no, but I want to know about that, that other thing. Visualize and then Lamborghini or Ferrari. I said, you think I sat at home? You think I closed my eyes, visualized Lamborghini? And then you think Lamborghini was in my bedroom like that? <laughs> I said, all the hustle and all the hard work that was put behind the scenes, you didn't see. So you think manifestation is that law of attraction. What does the word attraction have in it? It has the word action inside attraction. So when we understand that is the, the fundamental of it is what? Thought. Number one is think. We think, we create. But the problem is not conscious thinking. Because the problem is subconscious, what are you thinking? People are saying, I want to manifest a million dollars. Okay, you think that in the morning. But what are you thinking for the remainder of the 23 hours? Mm -hmm. You are stressed, then you manifest more stress. You manifest what you are. So we need to handle our subconscious. We need to reprogram subconscious so that we are thinking about our goal, not even thinking about thinking of our goal. So that's subconscious. In the energy of our goal the whole time. All the time. The so that takes brainwashing. So people need to be brainwashed. <laughs> uh, so... so Yes. <laughs> so, 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 so that's the first thing. Thought needs to be managed. Uh, mm. After thought, emotions need to be there, meaning burning desire must be there. Why? Emotion is energy in motion. What does that mean? It is when, if you were to hook somebody up on a monitor, their brain, and somebody is very, very emotional, how does vibration show? It shows like this. Well, if you want to hook somebody up, somebody's very peaceful. How does vibration show? It shows like this, right? So what does this mean? Bigger vibration. This is science. Bigger vibration will attract. It's a stronger power. It will attract vibration faster. So what does that mean? We think it. We must feel it. And the feeling must be amplified. So our burning desire must be there. Once we feel it, then the next thing, what do we need to do? Yeah. The next thing, so we've, that is the setting the intention. The next thing what we need to do is we need to take action, massive action, continuous action, uh, without attachment to outcome. That's why I always say, set it and forget it. If we are not attached to the outcome, we don't think about the goal, right? We're not always like, why, when is the goal happening? Why is it not happening yet? Why is it not happening yet? Because the moment we think that, we're in negativity. We attract more negativity. But we always take action, continuous action, and we don't be attached to the goal. Uh, so that is the final thing. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the importance of meditation? I love meditating. Uh, how much should we do? Is it recommended? Is it, is it um, like an amount per day that would be ideal? Uh, how much is too much? Is it possible to do too much meditation? I found myself meditating a lot during lockdown. So what is, what is the importance of meditation? And is there a formula that you would recommend about how many times a day and how much time? So a lot of people that are practicing meditation today, they are a little bit confused by what meditation to practice because there's so much out there. Mm -hmm. We live in overwhelm of information today. Mm. Are you meditating for third eye chakra opening? Are you meditating for chakra healing? Are you meditating for stress release? Are you meditating affirmations meditation? Are you doing music, yeah, yeah. listening to music meditation? Are you doing open meditation? Are you doing focusing meditation? Are you doing astral traveling meditation? What Actually, is the purpose? That's a really good question, yes. People ask, about, I do creative visualization because I believe that I sit there, I can create with my mind. I don't want to be like... But yeah. So what meditation, how long meditation, how often meditation depends on what meditation. If we, for example, if we say breath work meditation, then that should be done all the time. Inclusive of throughout this, throughout this interview itself has been done throughout because otherwise overwhelm, energy becomes chaotic. After too many lines, too many words, too many things, chaotic. Then our vibrations are chaos.
So breathwork meditation should be done all the time, throughout the day, all the time, because it keeps the mind calm, focused, productivity levels are high. Uh, manifestation meditation. So a bit like if it was visualization, as you spoke before, on our goals. We see it as if it's there already. That should maybe just be done once in the morning. Maybe before bed will be good because before bed, our subconscious mind can continue to manifest while we are sleeping. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be good. And then people say, so do I need to do it every day for the rest of my life for how long? How many times and how long you do manifestation meditation depends on how amplified the emotions were. Let's say, for example, if I get into one manifestation meditation right now, my emotions are pouring. I feel so much joy, so much love just even thinking about this thing. My vibrations are going like crazy. One time meditation is already enough. It's going to come. If I feel it difficult to visualize and not quite there, I'm kind of seeing but not quite feeling, then you would do daily practice to enhance the vibration. That's all. Mm. So that's how we will do for that. Uh, then the final meditation will be for seeker's journey. It's not just for manifestation. It's for people who they want to know what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? Do we exist in different parallel universe? What are we doing in parallel universe? What is deja vu? What is dream? Who are we? Who are we before we came into this planet? What happens when we leave? All of these things, this is for seeker's journey. If seeker's journey, then we must learn to take energy up towards third eye. From third eye, we go out to be able to see. So there we can see everything. So there's multiple. So we develop the intuition, what we call intuition, right? Mm. Mm. In a way. We will develop intuition. It's, it's much more than intuition. Intuition, is the, intuition is the feeling we get. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that will be going somewhere to see everything. That's consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that is final meditation. That meditation never ends. So that meditation will always be a journey. For the remainder of our lifetime, it will be a journey. I can confirm your energy is so, like I feel so calm and relaxed throughout the um, interview. And you're sending this vibration. I believe some people will feel it on YouTube as well, <laughs> but this is live, so I can confirm that. And uh, that's um, that would have that's what happens when you work with your energy all the time, and you have an effect on other people. Um, and talking about energy, one last question about energy for people like us who we put ourselves out there. I teach personal branding. We teach social media. I have personally experienced and felt energetic attacks. Like people get jealous and you attract people around you at some stage that might not have the right intentions and they're there for the wrong reasons. And I, at some stage I experienced that. And it, it did uh, influence me negatively in, in my work energetically. So how do we protect ourselves from, from that if we are exposing ourselves online? Do you believe it exists and how do we, because in, in my religion, in Greek Orthodox religion, yes, we believe in evil eye and, and there are procedures in the church as well. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I believe it was uh, John who used to say this. He used to say that if you're not, if, if you don't have haters, he said, you're not big enough. Uh, yeah. You remember he always says, if you don't have haters, he says, you're not big enough. Where positivity is, negativity will always be there. How we deal with it is only based on attention, that's all. I, I, I don't actually know the figure because we don't look into it. I believe, because I, I, I think right now on our online work, we get about 150,000 views per day uh, across social media. Every single day, 150,000 views. Out of 150,000 views, we must get around 7,000 comments or so. Mm -hmm. Out of 7,000 comments a day, I believe, this is a guess, I believe there's probably around 500 to 1,000 hate messages a day. Uh, so people don't put this into perspective. And I think a way that I always communicate it with people is to understand this. Everybody who's listening to this interview right now, they have a hater. 
For sure, I know. They've, pro- they've said something before, they've done something before where that person, there's somebody who didn't like what they did and commented on it. Everybody who's listening has experienced that before. Now, let's take that action that they've taken. So whether they did something in their relationship, whether they did something at home, whether they did something in the workplace, they upset one person. Now for them, that, the, the, those people to ask themselves this question, how did it affect them when the hate message came in. And it would have affected terribly. Like it would be like, oh my God, why does she think this about me? Why is she accusing me? Why is he whatever? It will come in that way. Now, so it made their day terrible or made their days terrible or their weeks terrible or their month terrible, right? Now, let's have a look at this. That action that that person took at home, at work, in relationship, how many people knew about it? I'm guessing five. Maximum 10, maximum 15. 50, out of 15 people who knew what you did or what you said, one person was upset, they came at you. When they came at you, you got upset, you got angry, you got frustrated, you were asking, why is this happening to me? Yeah. So let's now give this scenario. That person now, they want to spread positivity in this world. It takes courage. Like Pavlina, what you're doing, it's a lot of courage. It's not easy. To, to say I'm going to step up and put myself public, right, is very vulnerable. It takes a person who is courageous to take that step. Mm-hmm. So, so when you take that step, now imagine this. With, with what the action was or what they did, it reached out to 15 people. One person got angry and upset and didn't, didn't approve of them. Now, let me take that upset and anger, amplify it by just my reach right now. And I'm saying my reach is not high. I'm still a little, little ant on social media. People have 50 million, 100 million following. A little ant. Now, if they amplify their 15 people by the, what, 150,000 people that I reach every single day. Now, now then you also multiply the negative response that you got by the times that my reach is. Mm -hmm. Imagine now you have 5,000 people say that about you, hate you. They didn't agree with what you said. They accused you of something. Uh, Now, how would you deal with it? Actually, most people will collapse. (laughs) Most people will not not be able to get through it, right? It's tough is what I'm saying. It is tough. But focus is never there. Focus should never be there. You know, Pavlina, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely be able to resonate with this. Putting out a message, it doesn't matter if it reaches out to 100 people or 1,000 people. Out of a thousand people, you will read. Everyone will say, Pavlina, thank you so much. That was a beautiful message. Pavlina, that was really awesome. Pavlina, thank you. You changed my life. One person will message. (laughs) And that one person will message and say, she's fake. One, one, the moment you get that, how is that? Suddenly, a whole day is, oh. That that, that moment is like, uh, and then I just pressed delete. Like in the beginning, it upset me. Like the first bully I got, oh my God, I ended up in the police station because I tried to have a conversation with him. He kept, and then I didn't tell my mentor, John was mentoring me at the time. He said, why didn't you talk to me before all this? <laughs> but now it's just, no, blog it. And of course, the more energy you put on these people, whether it's a hater or a fake friend, or I notice that the more energy you put uh, on what they do, the more they bring me down. And energy, energy loves attention. So what that means, negative comes in, don't give it energy. Positive comes in, give it plenty of energy. Then that will expand. So that is the thing. If, if you made me every single day need to read all my comments, guess what? My day will be ruined for sure. Because it will be those sour grapes. You will see those sour grapes. You, you will ignore all the people that said, thank you, you changed my life. Suddenly the negativity comes in, it stabs, and you're like, oh, they accused me, you see. So uh, we, 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 don't, we don't put any attention towards that. Sometimes we accidentally see something, allow it to pass. Uh, focus back on the positivity. Uh, mm, perfect. Um, as we're coming towards the end, I wanted to ask you, what was the lowest moment in your life, if there was one lowest moment, and what was your biggest lesson from it? The most painful moment? Mm. Lowest moment actually was, was, was probably depression, was dealing with depression. It was tough. 
because people will tell you to think positive, but people who are depressed, they, they don't understand. You see, it will come in one year, go out the other. So that was very tough because I wanted to take my life back then. Wow. And so, and so I think that, and, and mental health is a big issue. Uh, only we, only two days ago, we had a Hindi actor also take his life because of, because of uh, mental health depression. So it's a big thing. And people go through it and people are afraid to speak about it and they're stuck. But understand one thing. Every single person on this planet was put here for a reason. God or universe will not put you on here for no reason. So we need to find that reasoning. And that reasoning will always, the purpose will always come from service. We are destined in this, in this, in this life to be, what is purpose? How do we feel purpose? We will find purpose when we are purposeful, when we are of purpose. So how do you become of purpose? Very simple. If somebody's washing the dishes, you go and you wash the dishes for them, they smile at you, you're of purpose. It's a life of service. The thing that changed my life around was because of suicide, wanting. I went out to Africa because I thought it was dangerous. So as a result of it, I seen kids that needed help. Then I built the nonprofit organization. This was around nine years ago now. So that gave me life because I started to realize this baby right in front of me right now, if it had not been of me, this baby would be dead right now. You're saying that I can save lives. And I'm passing this message on to everybody who's watching this interview right now. Understand one thing. If you have a gift to be able to even save one life in this world, right? That's a huge purpose. In one lifetime, if you can say you've saved one life, that's a huge purpose. Somebody was supposed to die if it wasn't for you. And every single person can do this. So whether you go on entrepreneur journey or not, my message to everybody is go out there, practice compassion, practice kindness, go out there, serve people, give to the people because you cannot go wrong by helping people. So everybody should dedicate, dedicate time there. Then you will find purpose. Perfect. Um, great message to, to close this interview, but one last message from you um, to everyone watching us um, that will help them wake up every day and be inspired to follow that purpose. What would be that one message you want to give them that will help them wake up every day and be inspired? to live their best life, to, to live their purpose? Mm. I think, first of all, they need to come from a place of love. That's the most important thing. Self-love. People like that. So come from self-love. Know that you're powerful. Know that you're divine. You've been put here for a purpose. So every morning you remind yourself of that. If it takes putting something on your wall to remind you that you are enough, that you're powerful, that you're a beautiful spirit, then do that. Because that affirmation will then program the mind. With that, we wake up. And we understand that there is so much that's happening in this world. Our life should be of contribution. So just go out there, just give. That's all. That's, that's all. Go out there, give. Go out there, practice love. Go out there, practice kindness. That's all. And you, you know, some people will say, well, what if it goes wrong? What if, we, what if, we, what if it doesn't work? What if, it, what if we fail in it? Actually, there's no such thing as failure because there's only learning from it. And understand that, you know, this is the thing. Failure will, 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 will only happen if you give up. If you don't give up, you can never fail. So you keep moving. Fail forward. You know, people, look at, people always look at our, our highs. They say, wow, how did you do that? Wow, I want to be like this. But you never seen the 15, the 50, the 150 lows that was before the high. It's tough. For sure, it's tough. But my question is to everybody, when the going gets tough, are you going to lie down and say, oh, well, you might as well take my life? Or are we going to say, as we were when we were a kid, when we came into this world, what do kids do? When they fall over, what do they do? They stand back up. For some reason, when we grew up, we lost that ability. We lost that courage. But deep down inside of you, you are still that kid that you once were. So going gets tough. Challenges will happen. Stand back up. Go again. Uh, fail forward, keep failing forward, and then you'll see all the fruits will come your way. Thank you so much for your time and your beautiful energy and the knowledge. And um, 
Yes, I hope we will be able to uh, uh, collaborate more in the future and do more things together. Uh, And I'm sure this interview will help a lot of people that will watch it. Just watching it and just feeling the energy (laughs) of what I feel when we're talking, just pick up the energy. I think just watching this interview will reprogram your mind. If you stayed until the end, (laughs) you have created some kind of shift. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tabi. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you. Bye. Namaste. Hey, this is Pavlina. Thank you for watching this interview with Master Sri Akarshana. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe here on my YouTube channel to stay updated with all my new videos and interviews with world-class experts. And make sure you check out those other videos here on my YouTube channel with other experts that I'm sure you're going to find inspiring and get a lot of knowledge that you need to succeed in life and business. Thank you and see you next time.